assumptions for running Pearson product moment correlation. Those assumptions are set of criteria or conditions that have to be met before performing the Pearson correlation. Pearson correlation statistical test will evaluate the relationship between two variables and check whether these variables have a positive relationship or a negative relationship. So the value for the Pearson correlation ranges from minus one to one. And to perform this statistical test, certain assumptions have to be met. The first assumption is that you will have two variables called pi variate, and those variables have to be continuous, i.e. they are not ordinal or nominal variables. Ordinal variables are variables that have order in them, like five Likert, Likert scale or seven point Likert scale, or an order such as first, second, third, and so on. For nominal variables, are such as uh, yes or no, male or female, occupation, professions, and so on. So to perform Pearson correlation, the first assumption that you should have a continuous variable, whether it's interval or ratio. The second assumption that have to be met before running the test is that your data has to be normally distributed. This can be examined and checked by drawing a histogram, which will show whether your data have a bill-shaped, normally distributed, uh, or it has a flat curve or a pointy curve or a curve that shift to the right or to the left. Also, a descriptive analysis of the data can determine the value for kurtosis or skewness. I've already made a video clip on the channel if you want to uh, learn more about how to examine the normality of distribution for a data using a histogram. Another way to look at the normality of distribution is to uh, um, produce a box plot. Uh, from the box plot, it will be possible to determine whether the data are normally distributed or not if the two whiskers are equal in length. And again, there is a video clip on the channels to follow. Another way to check whether the data are normally distributed is to draw a QQ plot and to find whether the data are aligned on the diagonal line or not. Again, there is another video for that. And finally, the normality of the data can be statistically checked using two available stat tests. The first one is Kolomogorov Semenorov test for normality, and the other one is Shapiro Welk test for normality. So those tests can determine the normality of the distribution based on statistics and based on the p-value generated. There are two available videos on the channel to watch. A third assumption is that you should not have any outliers in any of the variables. Outliers are an extreme high or low values or scores within your data set. The outliers can be visually examined and inspected using a box plot using this formula 
to determine the values for these outliers. Another assumption that has to be met that there should be a linear relationship between the two variables. And the way to examine that is to use scatter plot to draw one data on x axis, the other data on the y axis, and then look for linearity uh, in the relationship. Another assumption is to me it also the independent of observation. That means each score in one variable is independent of the score in another variable. And another condition to meet before using the Pearson correlation is that your sample should be random and randomly selected from the population. Another assumption that you should not have any missing data in your uh, variables. You have scores for both variables. And finally, um, another assumption that need, need to be met is the homogeneity of variances and this can be checked using Levin's test. I've already produced a video clip uh, describing Levin's test. So those are the main eight assumptions